On December 25, 2021, NASA, ESA and their partners launched the James Webb Space Telescope. And this telescope is going to collect the light from the earliest stars and galaxies in the universe that formed shortly after the Big Bang. And we need a special telescope to see this far. And this telescope needs to go to a special place too. So in this video I will explain to you where the James Webb Space Telescope is going and how it's going to stay there. Most of our satellites that we bring into space stay in orbit around the Earth. And their orbit and their speed is carefully calculated so that they can withstand the Earth's gravitational pull and don't drift away from us. The most famous telescope in space is the Hubble Space Telescope and it makes truly phenomenal pictures from our universe. But what this telescope can see is limited. So if you want to look further, you will need to use a different telescope and also a bigger telescope. So it's time that the Hubble Space Telescope gets some company in the night sky. But unlike the Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope will not be in orbit around Earth, but around a place that we call L2. And that's short for the second Lagrange point. And there are actually five of these points between the Sun and the Earth, and also between the Sun and other planets. And these places are handy parking places for a satellite, and maybe in the future also for other things. It is possible to park something here because we have found out that at certain places between the Sun and the Earth, the forces of gravity and the centrifugal force cancel each other out. Meaning that we can put a satellite there and it will basically stay there. And you can compare this a little bit to a game of thug of war. If we put a satellite between the Sun and the Earth, the Sun tries to pull it closer and also the Earth's gravity does its very best to keep the satellite close. And somewhere in between the Sun and the Earth, the forces cancel each other out. And it is here that we find the first parking place, L1. So right now, you might think it's somewhere in the middle of the Sun and the Earth, but it's actually still at one one hundredth distance away from the Sun. So if I were to show you this with a 100 centimeter ruler, you'd find L1 about one and a half centimeters away from Earth. And the SOHO telescope is there right now, and it took this picture from our planet. Let's move on to the next point. If you look at the Sun and the Earth, where could they be? The second point, L2, is at the same distance from Earth as L1, only you will find it at the other side of Earth. This means that the Earth is in between L2 and the Sun. And remember the game of Thug of War? A satellite at L2 has almost escaped Earth's gravity, but since it's at the same line as the Sun, the Sun's gravity also helps the Earth's gravity a little bit. Simply said, the combined pulling force from the Sun and the Earth keeps objects parked at L2 instead of drifting away further into space. And because the Earth is in the middle of L2 and the Sun, you could say that L2 is always in the shadow of Earth. And that's perfect for space-based observation satellites like the James Webb Space Telescope. In the dark, it can see distant stars and galaxies much better. Let's go back to Earth for a second. If your car is working on solar panels and you park it in the shade, will it be able to collect solar energy? That would be difficult, right? So this is the same for any satellite parked at L2. Since they are in the shadow of our planet, they cannot collect solar power for their mission. And that's why the James Webb Space Telescope will not go directly to L2, but in an orbit around L2 so that it can collect sunlight as well. And this is possible as long as the satellite has enough fuel to stay in orbit. But sadly, L2 is yeah, not a very convenient place to send a rocket to repair satellites or for refuel. So when the fuel tank is empty, their mission ends. And maybe after that, the James Webb Space Telescope will be sent into an orbit that's called the Graveyard Orbit around Earth. Let's move on. The third Lagrange point is much further away from Earth, all the way to the other side of the Sun, in about the same orbit as Earth. And because the Sun is in between L3 and the Earth, you can imagine that we can hardly see what's happening on L3, and we can also communicate poorly with any satellites there if they were there. So L3 is actually not that useful. Before we continue, these first three points aren't totally stable, meaning that 
any object orbiting at L1, L2 or L3 will tend to fall out of orbit if it leans just slightly in the wrong direction. The remaining two points, L4 and L5, are stable. No matter which direction you lean or drift, the forces prevent you from leaning farther, as though you were in a valley surrounded by hills, that said by Neil deGrasse Tyson. You can find L4 and L5 in the same orbit as the Earth, where L4 leads the orbit and L5 follows our planet. And because of their stability, natural objects such as dust or asteroids tend to build up in these regions. And Neil deGrasse Tyson says that these two points could therefore very well be places where we might build and establish colonies. It's theoretically possible to ship construction materials to these places with no risk of drifting away and return later with more supplies and start building. So these points are the real parking places in space. While L4 and L5 are more stable than the first three points, the ideal place for astronomy is L2. And the best thing is that L2 is possible to keep the Sun, the Earth and the Moon behind the telescope to get a clear view of the deep space. And that's why we send the James Webb Space Telescope to this place, and other telescopes will follow in the future. Right now, James Webb is almost at L2, but it will take at least five more months to prepare it for its mission to collect the light from the earliest stars and galaxies in the universe. First, its mirrors need to be carefully calibrated and it needs to cool down a lot until it's able to use its infrared telescope. And the telescope will be operating about uh, 233 degrees below zero and that's Celsius. And only then can the James Webb Space Telescope begin to uncover the secrets of the universe. Thank you for watching this video. I find the James Webb Space Telescope very, very interesting and I wanted to make a video about it. It turned out to be a different video than usual, so I'm curious what you think about it. And perhaps there are other topics that I should also cover? Well, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. Thanks in advance. Bye.